you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Oh, that's me. The Burt Special. Yeah, all right, sick. Let's get into this. All right, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Albert, the Burt Special. And today, as you can tell by the, by the title of this video, we are going to be defining what it means to be clutch in running. It's a little bit easier to define the word clutch when it comes to sports like soccer or basketball or football, because really all that means is, you know, being able to score the winning touchdown, being able to hit the game winning free throws, being able to score the winning penalty and penalty shootout. Just peep players that are able to perform in the, in the moments that matter the most. And it's obviously a similar thing in running. However, I think it can be a little bit of a gray area because does, is, does clutch mean making Olympic teams? Does clutch, mean being, does clutch mean being an Olympic gold medalist? If so, that means that you can only, does that mean you can only be clutch once every four years? You know, so today I hope to answer that question a little bit, a little bit, um, I hope to make that answer a little bit easier for you all to find. And really the point of it is to show that within all of us, we all have that, that little bit of clutch. We're all, we're all capable of showing that side of ourselves as long as we understand what that means and we can figure out how we can implement it, implement it into our own lives. So let's get into it. In my opinion, part of being clutch is being able to show up when everybody expects you to. Regardless of all the outside noise, outside expectations, whatever may have gone on behind the scenes, the best people are able to show up when it matters the most. This, this otherwise known as under pressure. In my opinion, at the professional level of running, there are two types of athletes. The first one being a performer. A performer is somebody that has incredible ability, amazing potential, and is able to win run fast times and, and you know win during the regular season. You know, people that are able to win diamond, people that are able to win at the Portland Track Festival, people, you know, people, people that are able to perform at a really high level when everything goes perfectly. We've seen examples like that, you know, we see examples like that, you know, every season. I'm sure we all know the person that ran really fast during the regular season, but wasn't quite able to show up during the championship moments. Um, you know, that, that's, I'm not here to call anybody out, but, that, but some of that was going on during the Olympic trials. I'm sure in high school, we've all raised people like that. I'm sure at the collegiate level, that stuff goes on. And obviously, you know, like I'm alluding to, at the professional level, that stuff goes on. A performer, a performer oftentimes struggles to show up when the pressure's on, when the expectations are there. Really, in, in running, in my opinion, it's really easy to show up when either everything is going perfect for you or, you know, when nobody knows who you are or nobody expects you to win. It's, being the underdog is easier than being the favorite. It's pretty obvious. Now, the thing that I don't want misconstrued here is that, you know, these people are obviously unbelievable athletes, you know? Being, you know, there's something to be said for running running really fast in a diamond league or a Portland track festival or at a, at a regular season meet. You know, if you run a fast time, that means you're a good, good athlete, obviously. You know, that's not what I'm trying to, I'm not trying to suggest that these people aren't good athletes, but we, like I've been saying, we all know the person that ran really fast, had a really fast time coming into the postseason, wasn't quite able to get it done. So, yeah. So what I'm getting at is that, to me, it's really admirable and incredible when somebody is able to manage the expectations, have the fast time going into the championship race, and still get the job done. They're able to deal with the expectations, deal with all the media, deal with all the, oh, you, sh you should make the team because you've done X, Y, and Z, or whatever it might be, and still show up when the pressure is on. That's the type of person that I'm talking about, and that is the second type of athlete. Somebody that is clutch, or in other words, somebody that's a killer. Now, I think it's important to actually define, I think it's kind of obvious based on what I've been saying, what a killer is, but I think it's important to sort of try and define or paint that picture a little bit more easily. And in my opinion, there are three traits that make, that, that make, that indicate that somebody is a killer. The first one, that they're, like I've been saying, they are, they show up at important races and are able to accomplish their goals. All killers show up when it matters. Like I've been saying, you know, it's all good to show up at a race that doesn't mean anything, a race that's a perfect situation for you on a perfect day where the sun's shining, it's 70 degrees outside and you have a great pacer that runs, that comes through exactly what you wanted to and you feel unbelievable and you run fast. That's all, that's all good. But it doesn't, but it doesn't mean anything if you go to the big dance and you aren't able to show up when it matters. Number two, the ability to do it more than once to, to prove that it's not a fluke, to be consistent. That's another sign of a killer in my opinion. It's all good to, you know, win, win an important race once, 
But, you know, if you never win a race again and you disappear off the surface of the earth, people are going to forget about you. Like I've been saying, we've all seen those people that have run that really fast time one time, had that breakout race, and it's, and you know, the question of whether or not they're going to push on and continue to perform at a high level, or, you know, take a step back, we've all seen the people that have taken that step back and we've never seen again or just aren't competitive when it matters, you know? Like I, I've said it a hundred times, I'll say it again. It's all good running fast when it doesn't matter. But when it does matter and you're not there, people are going to forget about you. And so, strand number two. Proving or being consistent and proving that it's not a fluke. Being a killer means that you are consistent, that you can be relied on, that you can do it more than once, that somebody can look at, somebody can see that you're racing and, you know, rely on you to perform to a certain level. Trait number three, and to me, this might be the most important, is that killers are able to overcome adversity. Like I've been saying, it's all good to have that great race once, but you know what? When you have, when you, it's inevitable for you to have to have that time where you sort of fall down a little bit, you fail, you run slower than you want to be running. But are you able to bounce back? Are you able to show some resiliency, build yourself back up, reevaluate your situation, and figure out what it is that's making you perform below where you should be performing, and just figure it out and build yourself back up? The true sign of a killer is somebody that is self-aware, resilient and able to build themselves back up when they fall down. And so I think it's important to show some examples of people that I believe embody all three of these traits. Example number one, Mo Farah. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's pretty obvious. I mean, Mo, all right, trait, let's, let's just go trade by trade. Trait number one, the ability to win in part races. He's the double, he's a double, he's won, he won the double, the 5K and 10K at two Olympics in a row. You know, he showed up when it mattered, won the important races. You know, he's, I don't know how many times he won the world championships, but he's done that as well. You know. Trait number one, pretty obvious. Trait number two, the ability to be consistent. He consistently showed up at races. You know, it's not it's not only about championship races. He also was able to put on shows at Diamond Leagues. He's able to win road races. He's able to, you know, people could watch a Mo Farah race and be entertained. And that's that's trait number two, the ability to be consistent. And Mo Farah, you know, he was able to do that. And trait number three, dealing with it for overcoming adversity. Mo Farah, he, uh, you know. Uh, when he, you know, the first people, I don't think, I don't think people forget, but at the, at the 10K World Championship Final in Daegu, Mo Farah, you know, went to the front with 400 to go, tried to out sprint the Ethiopians and got caught in the last 50. You know, for some people that could crush them. That could make them, you know, lose their mind a little bit. And, you know, he was coming back in the 5K and guess what? He overcame that adversity, overcame that mental barrier and was able to come back and become a world champion in the 5K and, you know. Look what happened. I, I honestly, part of me believes that if he hadn't won that race, you know, he could have had a complete, the complexion of his career could have been very different. And I think it says a lot about where he is mentally, where he could, you know, have that disappointment of not winning Olympic gold, or sorry, not winning world championship gold in 2011 in the 10K and coming back however many days later it was to come back and win the 5K final, you know, overcome adversity. Mo fair, first person. In case you can't tell, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty big fanboy of Centra, but it's not, it, it isn't unwarranted. Yeah, it is not warranted. You know, this I mean this dude, first of all, he's he had, he's had so many injuries over the over the last few years, but we got to but the first thing we got to address is 2012. This man, you know, if you've read his book, you know how devastated he was when he didn't win a medal at the 2012 London Games in the 1500. He got fourth, he missed by like 4 100 of a second, he was crushed. Guess what? He comes back a year later in the World Championships, gets a silver medal. Um yeah. Or you know, 2015 USA's he wins. 2016 we all know what happened that year. 20 or 2017 he was dealing with injuries, still makes worlds. 2018 wins. 2019 makes the world team dealing with injuries again. 2020 we all know nothing happened um, because of the pandemic. 2021 you know like I said earlier in the video, you know having a bad season still made the Olympic team. Over, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna call I'm not gonna call anybody out here, but he made he still made the Olympic team. Regardless of all the absolute noise. And sorry, let's just run through the traits again. Trait number one, the ability to win important races slash accomplish your goals. Trait number one, his goal this year, his goal going into the trials to make the team, he made it. Yes, he lost to Cole Hawker. Cole Hawker's on his way. I, Cole Hawker, I'm not gonna mention, I'm not gonna really go into, into depth into Cole Hawker, but he's, I mean, he's, he, I mean, he's just ridiculous, you know? He just ran through the he ran through the NCAA, ran through through the mile, showed so much unbelievable consistency. Cole Hawker is like you know he's clutch, he's a killer, but you know we're not, we're not we're not talking about him right now. Centro, you know dealing with injuries, showed up when it mattered. Trait number two, his ability to do it more than once. 
How many times did he win you? How many times did he won USA's? You know, being the favorite, being having that target on your back every single, you know, every, everybody is going to any US champs where Central is competing. Everybody knows, hey, Central's the guy we gotta beat if we wanna make this team. And you know, he's still he's he's still able to pull it out the bag every single time. Consistency. And number three, the ability to overcome adversity. You know, he's cut he's come back from disappointment, he's come back from injuries, he's always there when it matters most. Regardless of all the injuries, all the stuff he's dealing with outside the track, he's always able to show up when it matters. Centrus is a killer. Well, that's why I love him. And my last guy, El Garouge. Trait number one, the ability to win important races. You know, he's, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how many times he's won the world championships. He's an Olympic gold medalist. Um, you know, he, he always, he always, he, was, he always brought, he's always, he, at, at, you know, um, those pace races, he's always, he's, you know, world record holder. He's, you know, his resume, it ain't going on forever. I mean, we, I don't need to, I don't need to go through his resume. He's, he's won so many important races. He's, you know, broken so many records. He's just, he's untouchable in my opinion. Um, the ability to do it more than one time. I mean, same thing. He's just, he's, he's, he's ran so many fast. I would love to know how many times he's gone under 350 in the mile, for example, or how many times he's gone under 330 in the 1500. He's done it more than once. He's so consistent. He's won so many world titles. He's won Olympic gold. You know, uh, his accomplishments speak for themselves. I don't really need to go too, too deep into it. And the last thing, the ability to overcome adversity. You know, the thing, the thing that people were saying, I don't know, I wasn't alive during this time, obviously, so I don't really know, but I think I'm probably correct when I say this. The criticism about Ugg Rouge is that you look at so many of his championship races, and like especially world finals, he couldn't win unless, you know, it was a race where one of his, one of his teammates sacrificed them. I was about to say Algerian. One of his Moroccan teammates sacrificed themselves and pushed the pace out and played rabbit for him so that he could go on and you know just out you know out outrun everybody. Um, you know, so the argument against him was that he couldn't win in a tactical situation. 1996 Olympic final uh, falls. 2000 gets out kicked. So 2004, the Olympic final. I want to set the scene a little bit. 2004 Olympic final. He's up against Bernard Lagat, man with a lethal kick. He's run so fast. Um, and just, you know, the Kenyans are trying to, they're gonna, they're gonna try and, you know, beat him. They're gonna work together, they're gonna try and, you know, they're gonna try and out-strategize El Garouge. Um, you know, the argument here, again, it's like, you know, can El Garouge win in a tactical scenario? He's won all the world titles where people have, you know, gone out and sacrificed themselves for him. He's won all the, he's got all the world records, he's run fast, but can he do it in a championship scenario? I cannot fathom, all right, cut the B-roll. I cannot fathom the pressure that he, is under in this scenario, you know? It's either, for him, it's it's now is now or never. I can go from, I can either be the best never or the greatest of all time, all in these three and a half minutes. Can you, I, yeah, and we all know what happened. He goes, he, you know, grabs the race by the scruff of the neck, he closes the last 800 in 146 and becomes the greatest distance runner ever, in my opinion, or the, at least the greatest miler of all time, in my opinion. I just, you know, he, he showed up in the race, not that Matt, not the race that mattered to everybody else the most, you know? He showed up in the race that mattered most to him, you know? And that's, I mean, that's, that's as good as it gets in my opinion. He showed up in the race that mattered the most to him. And that's the most admirable thing in the world in my opinion. It was, it's unbelievable. I mean, that's my favorite, that's probably my favorite 1500 ever. Um, and yeah, he's, he was, in the third, I mean, I, I think I went through the first two, first two traits already. The third trait, the ability to overcome adversity. He overcame two Olympic cycles worth of heartbreak to show up in the race that mattered most to him and get the win. That's about as killer as it gets. Elgaruj, the best ever. Now, the thing that I, the thing that I need to, you know, get off my chest or make sure you all understand is that being a killer isn't exclusive, or being clutch isn't exclusive to being an Olympic champion or a world champion or whatever. You know. I've raced against guys in high school that I would consider to be killers. It's all about, being a killer isn't about being the best. Being a killer is about being the best version of you. If you're able to show up on race day every, and every single time, finish, cross the finish line knowing that you perform to, the, to your absolute best, then, then, it's fair, then it's fair to call yourself a killer. And for me personally, just because I'm making this video, does like I don't consider myself to be on that level yet, you know? I. I, I have not reached the point of mental strength where I can say, hey, you know, every single race I ran this past year, 
you know, I gave my 100% best and I performed to the best of my abilities. You know, we're all that's, we're all striving to get there. You know, I'm not necessarily striving to be the best, the best runner. Period. I'm just I'm striving to be the best runner that I can be. And so I think that's that's an important decision that I need you all to understand before we go any further. It's not about being the best. It's about being the best version of you. With that being said, killers are people that show up when it matters. Nine not nine the races that matter the most to the outside world or you know to your coach or to your mom to your dad. Killers are able to show up in the races that mean the most to them. And the thing is, the thing, and the thing, and I think I'm gonna end the video here is, the, the reason that I wanted to make this video isn't to talk down on people that consider themselves, consider themselves inconsistent or have failed a couple times, or feel like they aren't performing to their, to their potential. Point is, is to show people, you know, my understanding of what being a killer is and to show you that we all have that inside of us. You know, I've, it's important for you to think back of a time where you pushed through some serious level of pain in your running, or you failed, or you had a really bad race once, but you know, six months later or whatever it was, you had the race of your life, or maybe a week after, or just, it's important for you to remember those times where you overcame failure, um, where you, you know, put your head down, went back to training, and got better, regardless of the failures that you've had. Who would I be if I were to tell you that just because you had a bad race once, that that defined you as a person or as a runner? Um, you know, I've had bad, I've had bad, ra I've had bad races, but then you know, I've been able to bounce back, and I think that that shows a sign of a killer. The whole point is that we all have the potential to be killers, and it's important that you know the first thing is that you believe that you can be. That's step number one: is having the belief that you can be somebody that performs when it matters the most. Um, you know, and it's important for you to sort of. This, I'm stealing this from David Goggins, but one thing he talks about is the cookie jar. And so when you're when you feel like you're at your lowest, or you're at a weak point in your life, you it's so important that you have that cookie cookie jar for you to reach into, and remember, hey, I know I know you're having a tough. And this I'm I'm not about I'm not about to, I'm not about to solve depression or anxiety, but it's important for you when you're uh, you know down is to just remember, hey, you know I'm I'm not having the best time right now. But remember who you are, man. You know, for me. Hey, I just had a bad race, or I'm having a tough time. But remember, dude, like, you know, I've run through 50 and 1500. I, you know, have made unbelievable connections during the, during this gap year. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a lucky person. I have a great family, or whatever. Your cookie jar of accomplishments or things you have going for you is ultimately what's going to help you maintain that self belief, and that's, I think, what's really important. Um, and that's, and that's, I'm sort of bouncing around all over the place. But if you can, if you, the key is to not lose sight of who you are and what you're about. And I think that's uh, that's something that's very valuable. The other thing is, where your story starts isn't where it ends. Just because you just had a bad race, you know, yesterday, doesn't mean that two months from now, you can't have the race of your life. You know, just because well, just because your life's going a certain way now, doesn't mean that you don't, you don't have the ability to turn around. To turn it around, I think it's really important that people don't lose sight of that. Because I think, you know, if people can learn how to deal with failure, then that, can, then that will get them one step closer to being a killer. And you know, having the confidence to know, hey, I overcame this, this, and that, says a lot about what type of person I am, and therefore I can go into this stressful situation understanding what type of guy I am, and understanding that regardless of how this thing pans out, I'm still that dude, you know? And I've struggled with that, I'm sure you struggle with that, but I think that's, you know, the closer I can get to being that dude that remembers and is able to, you know, maintain that level of confidence, then the better than, that I can be, so, yeah. And so, to re and sort of recap, the traits that I believe make you a killer, and I, the, the traits that I want you to remember, are the ability to, you know, win when it matters, the ability to have that confidence, going into an important a championship race, you know, and being able to just show up, being able to, you know, perform to your best ability. Um, and, being, and also being able to have the understanding that regardless of how this race goes, as long as I perform at my best, I will be okay. That's really important. Um, the second thing is just being consistent. You know, being able to show up every time with that level of confidence. That's that's a, that's a sign of a killer to me. Being able to just show up, show up on the on the line every single time with that understanding of, hey man, I put the work in. I'm a confident kid, and I'm gonna race like one. You know, that's that's really valuable as well. And the last thing is, you know, like I, like I just talked about, the ability to overcome adversity. The be able the the ability to be able to you know. Take a step back, reevaluate, do the internal work that it takes to overcome hurdles, and bounce back. You know that's that's another that's something that's very admirable, and that's a sign of a true killer, in my opinion. So, yeah, these traits are what make you a champion. These traits are what separate you from the rest.
These traits are what allow you to become the best version of you. These traits make you a killer. And I hope you don't lose sight of that.